And uh, we're in UDK now, and uh, the frame rate is going to be a bit laggy um, as Camtasia isn't really designed for real time audio, uh, audio, or video, and stuff like that for video games. Uh, so it's going to be a bit laggy when I'm moving around. If you have to bear with that. But I've got him into UDK, and here he is. Um, looking all evil and shit. Uh, I made the glowing eyes, they turn out pretty cool. Um, I ended up redoing them though, they're actually spheres now. I can show you the really basic shade there, but it looks pretty cool. It works exactly how I wanted it to work. Um, and yeah, it looks a lot. It looks a lot cooler now that he's in the uh, the in the scene. Uh, and he's he's quite big, you know. You can easily see his high end six feet because he's next to that door, and you know doors are usually about six six point five feet or something like that, almost seven foot. So he's about eight foot tall, seven foot. So he's a bit of a monster. Uh, the colours are looking nice, nice and saturated, uh, desaturated. Sorry, and I pose him up on that. Now we've got his blade sort of bent round him. And his claws are all ready for action. Quite nice how it's sort of hitting the light in that window as well. So, but yeah, looks quite cool from down here. And I'm just going to animate some cameras. But first, I can show you uh, the little shader setup I've got going. For this guy, um, I can find the package. I have so many packages right now. I'm just going to right click him and find a content browser. Um, yeah, basic glow shader. Uh, it's literally nothing. Uh, what what makes it glow is because um, it's a sphere, and I'm using the Fresnel. Um, that that the Fresnel is basically doing everything. It's what's making that sort of center, the center of the um, the object glow. But it's not even the center. It's like a spotlight, but the spotlight is fixed on the sphere, and it just gives the illusion that it's glowing. And, the, and because it's a transparent sphere, um, it just works so well because that Fresnel is giving it the um, the fall off as well. So if you want a cheap glowing effect on a sphere, just whack a Fresnel on, um, put it into the minuses. Because if that was plus three, it'd have the opposite effect. Um, if I just type in three. You can see that the Fresnel is usually used for like um, like glass and you know like different like if you wanted like a transparent cube, uh, cube it's like a like a bottle or something like that or like a, a test tube or something something similar in nature. But I just reversed it and it gave me this effect. So that's pretty much how the glowing eyes are working. Um, doesn't work on flat on the it didn't it didn't work on those flat sort of things I cut out before. I had to make them. It is actually a sphere, is that? So, yeah, that's working pretty well. Uh, here's the material for the actual guy. Uh, it's not nothing major. I just whacked in the normal um, textures in a diffuse, and I added um, an add math function on the color, going to the uh, the specular alpha, uh, just so I get you know when when I'm actually picking up like. The highlights and stuff like that. It's taking the color information from the uh, the un underlying color, so it's not just white. Uh, it's not just a white specular everywhere. It's actually the colors that I painted in in Photoshop. So that's pretty cool. And that's 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 pretty much it, really. I just want I just didn't want it to have all this white shit all over it. So that's why I added in that add uh, and that multiply function here is just to control the uh, the strength like if I whack in like three uh, it's gonna go nuts as you can see that's the specular that I'm getting through but obviously I don't want it to be ridiculously shiny so I'm just gonna type in 0.5 again just to give it a subtle a subtle effect on there as he's made out of skin and whatnot which isn't very shiny um, but that's pretty much it uh, yeah all I need to do now is whack in some cameras and animate them. As I'm going to record, I'm going to I'll record the video directly in this window using Bandicam or Fraps or any of the real-time recording software. Does a trick. Um, but the first thing you want to do to make a cinematic video is you need a camera. <laughs> Shock horror. So I'm just going to go to the actor classes and just middle mouse button. 
the middle mouse button, just drag it out, just using the left click, and that gives you a brand new camera. Uh, and to actually, instead of positioning the camera by just using these arrow keys and stuff, we're going to hit this little eye button here. Uh, and what that's going to do when we move now, we're actually moving the camera with our camera. So it's kind of like stuck on our camera until we release this button. But, you know, because we move around like a camera, it's going to work uh, in the exact same nature of a camera. So it's very useful. And I think what I'm going to do is probably start it off in here, getting all cinematic and that. Uh, we're, going this, we're going this very top cut. Uh, let's just figure out a nice angle. I'm going to start here. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, let me just mention that. Uh, yeah. We start here. Uh, and I need to. I can't remember what I did now. I think it's Unreal Kismet we need to go in there. Yeah, Unreal Kismet. Uh, and I'm going to create a new. Uh, I'm just going to create a new object for this camera and then I'm going to make a new mantine or matinee sorry somehow oh, I think I have to connect this to something I'm not quite sure how I did it for where's that matinee thing I should have probably figured this out before <laughs> Uh, what did I do before? I need to make a new matinee sequence. Can you do it on this? Yeah. Don't do that to me. Right. Camera touch. I'm just going to make a new sequence by using that. I'm just going to call this um, the cinematic. Just bearing in mind that I, I'm only doing this. Um, okay, that didn't work. Uh, let's see now. Let me just come out of this. There's my camera. Okay. I need to go into Kismet. I swear I made create a new sequence. No, that's not right. New matinee. Ah, that's it. Fail. Uh, what you need to do is just right click once you've got your camera selected inside of Unreal Kismet and just press new matinee. And that is going to give us. Um, this window, this is what we want, this is what we need. Uh, I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller as well. I think we can go... Um, I can put that on there, yeah, that's much better. Because uh, I don't really need to see the full thing yet, so I'm just going to pull that up to there and move that camera selected. Uh, I need to make a new camera group. I'm just gonna call that cam one. Sorted. I'm gonna expand that as well. It's gonna be longer than four seconds. Uh, I, want, I want it to be quite long for this one. We'll go for about. 35 seconds uh, and I'm just gonna hit enter to uh, place uh, a keyframe on that camera and now I'm gonna go further down the line I'm just gonna hit uh, hit that button so I'm now connected to the camera again and just begin animating So I'm going to bring it back out here, hit enter, and then you can see
Um, hmm, why isn't it locking? Alright, uh, <laughs> so uh, what you have to do is click on the camera icon, right? Now I think this is going to be working. Right, now we can move. And I think it's enter, enter. Yeah, there we go. Right, so I, <laughs> it's been a while since I've done this. So I click that little camera button here, right? And that's kind of made the camera active and it's selected it. And now we can animate. Awesome. So I'm not sure if I'm not liking that in a minute. I might just keep it as a straight sort of thing. Well, I'm going to delete these. I'm going to delete ours. I'm going to start again on this. I've got a better idea. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to face the camera to uh, this wall here. Uh, just hit everything. And the re the way you set the uh, the FOV value, you've got to set the value using this method here. You can't actually like play around a bit that much. And I'm going to drag it all the way to 20, and I'm going to bring my camera all the way down to his sort of leg area here, and we'll just see what that gives us. So I want it to be all dramatic and not revealing too much until we get sort of down. So it's coming along the wall. It's coming along nice, going past some stuff. I think when it gets to this point, I want to sort of raise it up a little bit on my movement. And I want to set the, uh, the value out a little bit to sort of like 60. See what it's like. I have to set that up to 60 as well, so it's not going all crazy and stuff. So we moved along, moved along, and it's going to start to pick up a little bit. Okay, that was a bit weird. <laughs> Wasn't as smooth as I wanted it to be. Just delete that out. So my animating is you just gotta keep on doing it and doing it and tweaking and refining and stuff. Okay. Let me just make sure it doesn't slow down in pace. So it got really weird. I got to here. Nah, that's a bit better. But I'm not liking this. I think I've revealed too much on that little bit. So I'm going to say back down 45. Set that to 45 again. I think when it gets to sort of like here again, I'm gonna sort of pull it in and we just set this up to 60 or something. See what that's going to give us. I think I might have to, if I, maybe if I pull it out a little bit. Or is it supposed to be a 90 in it? Around. 
It's coming around on the wall. Dramatic reveal. Okay. I think I might speed this entire sequence up. I'm not even sure if you can do that on this. Can you move keyframes? You should be, you should be able to somehow, surely. Control click. Try that. Bit faster. Alright. Then from here, I think I'm going to quickly make my way to sort of. I don't know, around his Swiss sort of shoulder area. Like that. And then we're gonna come down his arm. Take a look at his hand. See what that looks like. I think we need to sort of pull the uh, I feel the view angle out a little bit. Set that to about 60. And no, we don't need to set that a bit more. 100. And then we're just going to sort of bring him around. We'll bring it round to sort of his palm. Like that. And we'll set that up to 45 again. Set it to about fifty. Uh, let's just see what this looks like. Looks a bit dodge. I'm not sure on. Uh, that's a bit messed up. Let's just see what we've got. I like I, I like some of it, but. Okay, we're really in the uh what are we in there, we inside the radiator or something. Um so it needs to come out a little bit. Around. This is just a bit on the hand. That bit's a bit missed. You could do with the uh 
I think we should now I can have to look at the camera angle that way. So when it's like there, I wanna pull it out a little bit. I don't know if that's going to be too... Try to focus on that hand so everyone can see the detail I've got on it. Yeah, try out. Quite like this bit when it picks up the pace. I think that's quite interesting. Should probably try and add some line there as well to the different elements of this shot. So we got it comes around and it comes up here. I think for this bit when it sort of flies around here. We should squeeze it all in a little bit. Just to sort of make it more interesting. I don't like wobbles so much up here. I can see the FOV. Or I don't like how it sort of dips down, you know. I think for this bit it should be sort of, I don't know, like up here somewhere. Uh, get all these dramatic angles going in. And so it dips down and it's coming down into that nice hand shot yeah that's pretty nice it's pretty boring to the end though I think we can probably get away with that and just so maybe pull it back a little bit And a blur out there. Yeah, that's fine. That is pretty much animating in a nutshell for UDK. Um, just got to render this out now or capture it on video. And do a few more angles, different shots and stuff. So I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> just thinking about like what I'm doing and trying to. It looks cool. It's got to get some more different angles in now. Right, that's pretty much it, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and get this out now and make a video out of it. So, cheers.